Here we go again. Persa, using that fundamentally flawed and scientifically criticised 2014 Recreational Fishing Survey to justify its management plans for the recreational sector. This time through the 2017 Management Plan for Recreational Fishing in this state. They keep claiming the survey is robust and was statewide. There's nothing statewide about 376 people taking the survey who had to be prompted by telephone calls and emails throughout the period. It is a total sham and a shame on an organisation like PERSA that has to be professional. This group would fit in well with the good old boys down in Mississippi. It is discrimination at its worst to one of its key stakeholders. PERSA hangs its hat on this survey to justify the management decisions it makes even when the authors claim the survey should not be used in this fashion because of the 40% error margin. A 40% error margin. Just take that in for a moment. The survey claimed 20% of South Australian recreational fishers accounted for 56% of the total effort in 2013-14. Now using that error margin, it shows the complete opposite. PERSA claims 55,400 fishers accounted for 56% of the effort, but using that 40% error margin, in actual fact, only 33,240 fishers took 56% of the effort. That represents only 12% of fishers. Here's the real fun part. I mean, it is so ludicrous, it's absolutely laughable. Those 12% of fishers accounted for a total of 7,078,400 individual finfish, shellfish and freshwater species. Now, that's out of a total of 12,640,000, according to PERSA and the survey. I hope you had a good feed because I sure didn't get anywhere near that in the 12 months I fished. My hands would have been sore. PERSA sets up its strategy using this data so it can claim a comparison can be made between the recreational and commercial fishing sectors, especially when making decisions relating to access and allocation of resources. Now that's the biggie here, the allocation of resources. It can now blindly go ahead and claim recreational fishers have overfished the resource so they can introduce bag and boat limit cuts but implement no management decisions on the pros. They don't even introduce a total allowable commercial quota on finfish. If they're so alarmed at the species decline, why not limit the pros? I mean, they use nets and long lines and get overall 72% of the allocation. If any damage is being done, it's from them because of their massive allocation. Basic Maths 101 teaches you that stuff. And these guys are supposed to have scientific backgrounds. Please. I'm not finished yet because I like decisions to be made on the latest information available. And if it's not, I go and get it. I would expect nothing less from a government organisation that likes to refer to itself as the world's best fisheries managers. But no. PERSA harks back to historical information in order to suit its own agenda. It claims the most recent expenditure estimate for South Australia was in 2000-2001 of $148 million by recreational fishers. How out of date is that? Well, let's take it back further to the published data from PERSA in May 1997, where it stated the recurrent expenditure by recreationals was $350 million a year. Don't forget the $1.2 billion in total capital investment in fishing boats and tackle. Now, you can't tell me that from 1997 to 2000, there was a massive 60% drop in annual expenditure by recreational fishers. What a load of baloney. And don't forget, PERSA is using 18-year-old information to set its new recreational management plan. So full of holes, it's like a crumpet. Persa, you are a laughing stock. This management plan is nothing more than a document you want to legitimise in order to continue giving the professional fishing sector whatever it wants. I hope those crayfish tails, prawns and snapper at the Christmas party go down well because you've thoroughly deserved them.